Hello, we're Pastors George and Terry Pearsons. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. We are so glad that you've joined us today. I love it that you came. We love it that we came. It's such a <laughs> wonderful privilege, wonderful honor, and a real thrill to us to be in front of you again, thanking Brother Copeland and Sister Copeland for allowing us to, to this, this holy spot to bring the Word of God to you, and I know it's going to be good. All week long, we've got some insight on where we're headed. Yes, we do. It's going to be good. <clears throat> it is, and I'm so glad that we're doing this together. This is a lot of fun. I know. I like this. To be able to preach the Word. We've been together for a long time. We figured it out last night. Yeah. We've been married almost 17,000 days. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah, we're just a couple of days away from it. And so I think we're going to have a 17,000 days anniversary, anniversary. party. Yeah, yeah. Well, could you come? Okay, I'm kidding. Hey, we also want to let you know that all of the outlines that we are working from are available to you on kcm.org slash notes. And you can download these, you can use these. Pastors, you can use these for series in your church. All the scriptures, the notes, the ideas, the thoughts, the concepts that we're talking about, they're all right here. And you know what? These outlines, we do that. We look at other outlines that are available from other ministries mm -hmm. and they're great insights. We'll pull a little from this one, a little from that one, and it's so helpful. <clears throat> There's no copyright yep. on, on the scripture. And it's great to have that kind of uh, resource available. And we've been studying after Kenneth and Gloria Copeland for a long time. For a long time. The, the bulk of what we have learned has come from them. And, you know, over the last month plus on the Believer's Voice of Victory, you've been hearing about healing and the topic of healing. Terry, it's really been something. Your dad's been teaching it. Before that. Before that. We were on with 10 days of healing. Right. At that We enjoyed that. It was good for us. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was thinking about it, what a privilege it is to... Uh, from the Lord to be able to go through these scriptures because we're feeding on it in order to bring it to right. you. George, I think it'd be good to review just yeah. quickly. Yeah. Uh, be tempting to go back and reteach these things, but but um, let's quickly go over and review what we said when we did the 10 days of healing. And, and that should also review a little bit of some of the things Brother Copeland has taught you. Right. So we did. We had... 10 days of healing, we focused completely and totally on the healing power of God. Uh, if you wanna get a refresher on that, just go to kcm.org and you can be able to look that up, find it, go back through those. And one of the reasons that we do that and the reasons that we do preach healing is because it's part of the calling on Kenneth Copeland Ministries to teach people about their healing and it, you know, it takes, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith for healing comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And so it, there's no question whatsoever. And I don't take this lightly. It is God's will for us to be healed. And Terry, I say that because before I met you, before we met at All Roberts University, before I heard about these messages that I, from your dad and from Gloria, um, you know, I was taught differently, and we've learned differently <clears throat> that some people have said that it is, you don't know if it's God's will for you to be healed. Or he's, or he's making you sick to teach you something. Exactly. And boy, when I heard this, I got so free. I got so excited. So there's no question, it is God's will for you to be healed. And we've talked about in that subject, reviewing our minds to divine healing, knowing that we're redeemed from the curse of the law, where, where sickness is concerned. Uh, the God who heals, Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the God who heals. <clears throat> um, God's prescription for health, found in Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. We talked about the language of health and how important it is to speak the word of God. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. And then we learned about how to take authority over our body. Paul took authority over his physical body, and he took dominion over it. Well, we do the same thing. Well, we had, we had an outline that was planned for that series, and we spent so much time talking about these things, we didn't get to it. We didn't get to it, but we decided this worked really well to be able to come follow up all these messages on healing, yeah, yeah. which really proves that God wants you well. He wants you to stay well. 
but then now this message is gonna put a pretty bow on the package. Yep, and let me read this scripture before we jump okay. into that. Psalm 103, one through five, listen to this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits or his covenant benefits. And he lists them out here. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, or you could say they're good words, good faith words. Because in in Hebrew, in the Hebrew, the word things yes. is also the same word for right. word, word yep. and things. Word, the word of God became things. Let there be light and the planet. And so you could even say that when we're speaking good words, yes. God's word, yes. it becomes good things. Yep. So you speak those words, speak those good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Boy, we confess that scripture. We confess it from the Amplified Translation. Yes. Uh-huh. Who satisfies your mouth. Listen to this. <clears throat> your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation with good, so that your youth renewed is like the eagles, strong, strong overcoming, overcoming, and, and soaring. soaring. We say <laughs> That's that. So good. We say that to each other yeah. a lot as we pray over our meal and yeah. other times. But just to to build that into our thinking all the yeah. time. That's God's SOS. Strong, overcoming, and, and soaring. soaring. Yep. So with that said, okay, here talking we talking about where we're going this week. Yep. So healing comes in several ways. Uh, there is that can come by the operation of the gifts of the Spirit or a special anointing. For example, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11 lists them gifts of healing, working of miracles, the gift of faith, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, or discerning of spirits. That, that's dealing with um, recognition, the presence, and the working of a demonic spirit. And Jesus, is, a lot of times it says he cast the devil out and healed him. So there are some times that that's involved. Well, those are special anointings that God's put in the church, but the Bible also tells us that it's as he wills. Well, does God will it just at a a whim or I think I like you or not? No, he has purpose behind it all. He knows what we need, but that is one way that healing can come. Another way is healing can come is through someone else's faith. Okay, what would that be like? Well, Mark 16, 18 says, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So sometimes it's somebody else's faith or anointing on their ministry calling like uh, one of the fivefold ministry gifts or someone who has the working of miracles in their life, that happens. They lay hands on somebody and healing comes, which may or may not be a product of your own faith or that person's own faith. It comes through the faith of somebody else. You can be sure faith is involved. But the third way is by using your own faith, standing on the covenant provisions of God's word. And that's always available. Special anointing, not always available and not always God's path for you to take at that time. But God's word and using your faith on the in the covenant promises is always available. It's there 24 seven, every minute of every day because it's part of his everlasting covenant. Now with any of those, natural healing may or may not be involved. By that I mean a doctor or a medicine or, or some other natural means may be involved but it may not be involved. But even uh, if natural means are involved, it should never exclude your faith. It should never exclude God. Right. So right. Uh, I was thinking yesterday, George, about Asa, King Asa. Mm-hmm. Bible yep. says that yep. he did not seek the Lord and it really cost him. Why? He had disease in his feet and he was a good king, but he didn't seek the Lord about that and he died. He didn't. He didn't do what he knew to do. So keeping the Lord engaged, whatever method of healing is at work or you're putting to work, your faith needs to be involved. Thing of it is, no matter how healing comes, it could be through one of those special anointings, using your faith, faith of somebody else, 
But no matter what it is, that's not always the end of the story. Right. Your healing is great right. when it comes, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always end right there. And there's, that's the reason we have the topic that we're going to cover this week. And that is, once we are healed, how do we keep our healing? That's it. That's it right there. Once we're healed, how do we keep it? Why do we have to keep it? Because there's a thief. That's a thief. That's right. We have right. to be aware of the thief. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's yep. not forget that there's an enemy to our soul exactly. and to our health. So you need to know that. That's important for you to know where your healing is concerned because there's some people who get healed, they lose their healing, they don't know what to do about it, and they don't know who, who is at the very heart of that. Mark 4, 14 and 15. The sower sows the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. That's really a key is what it says right yep. here. Who is the thief? Satan is the thief, yep. and he comes to steal. John 10.10, 10, that, that that's the dividing line right. of the whole Bible. Right. If you get this right, then you'll better understand the whole of Scripture. John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Right. The devil right. never, ever, ever, never, ever comes to be a blessing. No. Nope. He never comes mm -mm. to help. Mm -mm. He never comes to be your friend, your buddy, or your yep. assistant. He's never got a good plan for you. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they, or you, me, may have life and have it more abundantly. I like to say it like this. Jesus came to give life more abundantly than what the devil can steal or kill or destroy. That's good. That's Jesus' good. life always outweighs whatever the devil has done. So that's, we went to ORU, mm -hmm. and one of the first things mm -hmm. we heard and always heard, <laughs> Moral Roberts, and that yep. is? God is a good God and? The devil, he's a Bad devil. <laughs> That's right. I love the way you say that too. The devil. He's a bad devil. He's a bad devil. No. And, and we, some people get those confused. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Well, Oral Roberts was getting criticized, criticized because he was saying God was a good God. Yeah. And the devil is so a bad devil. Don't say that. You'll confuse people. And they blame God. Yeah. They blame God for sickness or disease. They blame God for tragedies that take place or even destructions or weather. Oh my goodness, he gets blamed for stuff that he didn't yeah. do. And you know, we talked a lot about that in our 10 days of healing, so I'll remind you to go back right. for that refresher, uh, the information there on your screen that'll you, where you can go and watch those broadcasts yeah. again, or just ordering the products that we have for you, that, that'll help you Let get me that add this clear. about the scripture in John 10, 10. Okay. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, or zoe, the God kind of That's life. That's the Greek word for mm -hmm. life. Greek word for life. <clears throat> that they may have it more abundantly. And the amplified translation of that says, to the full until it overflows. Well, that's what, that goes along with what I was saying, that, that life more than what the devil can bring. Yep. It, his, yeah. he, the, in fact, Paul said, death is swallowed up in life. Yes, that's the way Jesus does it. But then, George, it's interesting here, there in Mark 4, it says Satan comes to steal, mm -hmm. but what is it he comes to steal? It's important to know what he's actually yep. after. You say, well, he's after my health. Yes. He's after my life. Right. Yes. But the thing he's most after, the thing that he hates for you to have is the word of God yes. that was put in your heart. If he can get that out of your heart as quickly as possible, Jesus said he comes immediately. Don't let it root, don't let it sprout, don't let it bear fruit. Yeah. Yeah. And why is that important? Because the word of God is the life. There's life in the word. That's right. There's life in those pages. Well, think about this scripture, Psalm 107, 20. He sent his word, word and did he, what? He healed them. Healed them. The word healed them. Yeah. Jesus proved that over and over. He sent his word and it healed them. He cast the spirits out by his word. So the word of God is the biggest threat to Satan. 
not your being healthy alone, but to get the word out of you. And by doing that, he can take your life, he can take your health, he can take your family, he can take anything he wants to if he can keep the word out of your heart. Exactly. So, sometimes. Yep, there are symptoms that will either return or something else happens. Comes right on the heels of it's your the, healing. It's the pile-up technique yeah, that the devil yeah, has. Yeah, and that's uh, many people, they don't know what to do when that happens. Yeah. And the way the devil will steal the word from you is to introduce familiar symptoms, introduce something else, and just see if you will swallow the bait. If you swallow his bait, then you're yeah. letting go of the word that produced the healing in the first place. Yeah, yeah, and like some say, well, I guess I guess I never did get my healing in the in the first place. To where they something may have happened, they got healed, and then it came back again. I guess I never received. I guess the word didn't work, and that's not true. No, it's easier for people to do that. Uh, when when the healing came through someone else's faith or through one of those special anointings, because maybe they don't even know how healing came to start with. But when you know that the that it's the word that produced your healing, then you know what to hang on to. So getting that straight really makes a difference in understanding that Satan comes to steal the word. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe maybe that word see that that produced in your life, it might not have rooted very strong, had time, you might not have watered it, you might not have done a lot of things, which we'll be talking about, that will help you with seeing to it that that word stays rooted. But you know when you've been healed, and it doesn't matter if there's a change for 20 minutes or 20 days, 20 weeks, 20 years. Some people want to acquiesce or give up. You know, when Abraham put his sacrifice on the altar, that not, not as Isaac, but he laid the sacrifice out, and the Bible says that the buzzards came, and they wanted to take the buzzards, wanted to take his offering and try it, and he fought them off. He fought yeah. them off. Yeah. Those are doubt buzzards. Yeah. Those are what if and yeah, but, and all those kind of questions, but he fought them off. What we'll be talking to you about this week is fighting off the buzzards. That's right. So let me ask you a question. All right. Why do Christians lose their healing? Well, that's what we want to talk about this week. You know, Brother Copeland says that we have to recognize that we are not the sick trying to get healed, but rather we are the healed. We are the healed. And the devil's trying yeah. to take our health from us. Yeah. And the devil wants to take advantage of a lack of knowledge. Yeah. So all this week, we're going to tell you how to keep your healing, but maybe you didn't hear the broadcast before. Maybe you haven't heard it before. Maybe this is your first time to view it. But if you'll listen to this, then you'll have a, that it's the seed of the word of God that will plant and it will bring healing to you this time right. that maybe you've never had before. It is, it's due to that lack of knowledge of what God's word says about healing. I know that's true for me in terms of when I was first growing up as a Christian. I didn't know these things, Terry. I was not introduced to this way of life. And so I had that mentality that, again, I guess God puts sickness on you. You never know if he wants to heal you or not. And that is a lack of knowledge. That is really spiritual ignorance of the word of God and the covenants that we have with God to be able to know that it is his will, that it is his desire, and that there are certain things that we are required to do in order to hold on to that healing and not let it go. I think it'd be good to just touch on this next point, George, but then we tomorrow we can review this and pick up on sure, it absolutely. again. So we don't want the devil to steal the word. We don't want the devil to take the word from us. What are we gonna do about it? How do we stop that? Well, the number one key to keeping your healing is stop the thief. <laughs> Ephesians 4.28 in the Amplified Classic says, let the thief steal no more. Well, who's Paul talking to when he said that? Was he talking to God? God, don't let him steal it anymore. God, stop him, stop him. 
I do pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. And if I can, I do it so well because I felt that way, yeah. just like you yeah. have. But that's not who Paul's talking to. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. Yep. He said, you don't let him steal any more. No, no, no. no. James 4, 7, read that. Resist the devil. No, say it like, like. Oh, say it like, I like, mean it. Yeah, like. Uh, You've got to resist, resist the, the devil. devil. There you go. Resist the devil. And what will happen, brother? And he will flee from you as in stark terror. That's right. I like that. That's a, very good. That's How did very I do? Good. Yeah, you Thank did you. all right. That's okay. all right. So, <laughs> so a lot of times, believers aren't missing it so much in their believing. I believe God has. I believe he does. I believe he will. But they're not recognizing that there's an enemy and do what they need to do to resist him. They're missing it mm -hmm. in the area of resisting the devil, but we have to stay in resistance mode. Resistance mode is more than, I rebuke you, devil, and I this and I that. That can, can be a part of it, mm -hmm. but you just can't walk around staying doing that. Yeah. But understanding what resistance looks like and what resistance, uh, how it, how it um, can be integrated yeah. into everything that we're doing. Right. So this in James 4, 7 says, resist him. Resist you just said him. that. He will yeah. flee. So there's a lot to that word resist. I mean, there are, there are techniques and ways that we can learn how to resist. And this healing harvest of health package that we have, yeah, let me pull that, that is going to help you to be able to learn what to do, how to, how to hold on to the healing. And if for some reason you've lost it, here you go. This is the way that you can build your faith to do it. What have we got here? Well, I think this is marvelous. This yeah. is one of the best things where the healing scriptures that Brother Copeland is reading, we played this for my kids at night. We play it and they had them about memorized and had their favorite had their favorite ones that they would quote. Gloria Copeland's Harvest of Health, Gloria Copeland's book, and Jesus Healed Them oh, All. Oh, that's a good this one. This is one of my personal favorites. Yeah, very um, good. I, I really like this one, and it's, there's just this real sweetness about this book. Mm -hmm. But this is also very handy. It says, you are healed by Gloria Copeland. Not that Gloria Copeland's the healer, but I like especially this front part because through this, it's going to cover a lot of the same topics we'll be talking about this week. What do you do? What do you do when you're when you're standing in between amen and there it is? That's it. What do you do when the yeah. devils come to take it? What do you do to keep the devil from taking it? That is in the front of this brochure along with scriptures for you to hold fast to. These are so important to us because this is what I cut my teeth on when I first came here to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's not only God's will for you to be healed, it is God's will for you to stay healed. Stay healed, stay and, well. And really, no matter what age you are, and that's a mentality that has to be broken. Well, I guess because I'm getting older, I'm gonna get sicker. No, we're gonna get more and more of a resistance position for the devil, where the devil is concerned, so we can hold on to that which God has given to us. So the announcer's gonna tell you how you can get yours. Are you ready to experience a life of divine health, vitality, and victory? Introducing the Harvest of Health Package, a collection designed to empower you and elevate your health. Turn on healing scriptures and let the Word of God guide you on a journey of faith and healing. Listen as Kenneth Copeland reads anointed healing scriptures. Defeat doubts and receive your healing, allowing the transformative power of God's Word to get into your heart and flow through you. Explore the profound revelations in Jesus Healed Them All, a book by Gloria Copeland. Discover the will of God in action through the ministry of Jesus. Dive into overwhelming scriptural evidence that without a doubt, it is God's plan to heal today, just as in the time when Jesus healed them all. And for those committed to living in divine health every day, the Harvest of Health mini book by Gloria Copeland is your guide. Don't wait for an emergency. Start feeding on healing scriptures now. Learn how to sow the word of God into your heart and reap a harvest of health in your life every day. Because now is the time to embark on a journey to a healthier, more abundant life. Order your free copy of the Harvest of Health package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, including the You Are Healed brochure packed with related healing scriptures. Feed your spirit on the Word and stay ready to reap your harvest of health every day. Go to kcm.org slash tv special or call 800-600-7395. 
Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Take the word of faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Build your faith through powerful articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories and testimonies of real life victory and equip your kids for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today at kcm.org. You know, prayer is the very foundation. I mean, it is the rock solid foundation of Kenneth Copa Ministries. And it's prayer that's based on the Word of God. It's a core value that we have here at the ministry, and that that's is right. that we pray that's about right. everything. We go to the Word, we make it final authority in our lives, and then we base our prayer on that Word. So if you need prayer for something, for your healing, for your family, for your finances, we want to make available to you through our prayer line, That's right. prayer ministers who are full of the Word of God, full of faith, full of love, and ready to pray for you. They're licensed, they're trained in the Word of God, and they're ready to release their faith on your behalf. We have prayer ministers in our offices all around the world, and so to contact the office nearest you, you can go to kcm.org. So with that said, Terry, let's pray for them right now. I know there are folks out there right now that are believing for their healing, so let's do it. Let's, let's lay into the devil and take hold of what rightfully yes. belongs to us. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you for those that are watching right now. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. It is your will, it is your desire, and it is your covenant promise that we be healed and whole and well. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed, Amen. be made whole. Take your healing, resist the devil, and stand tall in the spirit and lay hold of what rightfully belongs to you. Say this after me, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I believe. I believe. I receive. I receive. Perfect health. Perfect health. Free from disease. Free from disease. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, hallelujah. Praise God. Don't forget that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus, Jesus is. is Lord. Find out more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith. Visit our website, kcm.org. We walk by faith when times are good. We walk by faith when times are terrible. No person that lives by faith has to change his or her lifestyle because of the times. You will bring honor to God when you increase in your fruitfulness. God has so much more in store for you than what you've already experienced. Join us for the Branson Victory Campaign with Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savelle, April 4th through the 6th. Register at kcm.org Branson today.